The Battle of Borodino in 1812, 70 miles west of Moscow. The French are nearly at the doors of the Kremlin, but there is one more obstacle before them, and that is the field of Borodino. Four huge Russian armies facing four French armies and their allies. This is one of the bloodiest battles in history, and today we are recreating it. What's up guys and welcome back, I'm Pope John Paul and we're here with another Napoleon Total War 3 battle for you today and this is, as I've already mentioned, the Battle of Borodino in 1812. A huge army of the uh, Russians faces off against another huge army of the French, about 140,000 French against 130,000 Russians I believe, somewhere around that figure. So it's a huge, huge battle, one of the biggest of the era and it was a uh, about as bloody as the Somme, some of the figures, like the casualty figures, are ridiculously high. And, uh, well, it's just a massive all-out slog. And the all-out slog is already beginning, it seems, with some artillery here. Some artillery going off from the Russians. We have some, uh, these are like six-pounders, I think, going off over here. They're firing off against the Poles. But, yeah, so we have four Russian armies, as I've already mentioned. We have the Austrians here, led by a, a Schwarzenberg, who has, uh, I presume, one of the... P the Austrian like contingents that are here. We have Pontinowski with the Poles. They were obviously a large contingent of the French invading force. We also have the, a French force led by uh, Renier, uh, Renier over here, who's uh, leading like the sort of the German like forces that are allied with the French. Here is a uh, artillery piece already getting ready. I don't know what that's going to fire up. Maybe the infantry lines over there. Needs to be careful of the artillery, of the cannons, the cavalry, I meant. But yeah, that's firing over there. And then we have Davo over there with the actual true French force. The only actual French proper corps here, you could say. The rest are allies or, uh, well, yeah, allies, really. But yeah, I mean, they do look glorious. They've got their winter coats, which they'll need later for their great retreat through uh, past Moscow. I mean, yeah, we've got... Lots of different uh, Russian armies here. We've got lots of different generals. All, uh, I think the most famous obviously is like Bagregation. Um, and we have uh, Barclay de Tolly here as well. I think he's near the back of the fight somewhere. But uh, yeah, it looks like the Russian line infantry is coming forward. We've had a little bit of an engagement. Looks like some Poles have uh, come out poorly here. Maybe some uh, Austrians as well. I'm not really sure. Certainly look like Poles by the uh, uniforms, but I mean, here are the Russians. I don't think we've actually seen the Russians yet, like this Russian uh, patriotic war faction on the uh, on the channel yet, but they do look glorious. This is like the proper, like, actual unit, uh, like the actual proper, like, Russians I'm used to seeing there uh, from Lindsey Novgorod. So somewhere deep in Russia. Uh, and then, well, it looks like, I mean, the Russian army starting to appear over here. I mean, the Poles look like they have a huge outflanking force, like, ready that they could mobilize. I presume these are, like, the famous Polish uh, Ullens. Yep, they have plenty of the Polish Ullens here. These guys look great. The Poles are by far and away one of my favorite factions, I think, uh, in the game. And uh, led by Pontinowski, their, their marshal. But it looks like, uh, yeah, they could, they could definitely flank on this force here. I presume there's another force ready. And there's a general under attack. Is he already being shot at? Who is this? Oh, Rainier has been shot at. Well, that's a bit of general sniping going on here. You need to be careful of that. Bit ungentlemanly from uh, this period, but... I mean, it's not out of the question. You need to just be careful of that. And it looks like the Poles and the Austrians are going to try and, like... We're going to try and make a, a push through this hole here in the line, in the Russian line. I mean, obviously, it's not all that can be seen yet. But, uh, I mean, it looks like that's what they were going to try. And it looks like we've got some skirmishers now. Here. We've got some Schutzen. Some uh, German light infantry. They're going to fire onto the, the light infantry over there in the distance. Possibly? I don't know. But if you'd like to see more Napoleon Total War 3 on the channel, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to uh, show your support. And also don't forget to hit the bell so you will always know when the next Napoleon Total War 3 battle is out. As the French line up here, they look like they're going to be facing off against. I think this is a uh, Bagregation's army here. Yeah, looks like Bagregation's on the far left. He is going to be facing Davour today, one of the uh, Napoleon's most able marshals. Oh, I do apologise. It seems to have just phased below the earth. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, so we're back anyway. We're back. We stopped phasing between the earth, and it looks like the cavalry's on the move. Perfect time to be coming over. It looks like the Polish are going to be charging down into 
Looks like Russian Karasi is here. In their dark green. Oh, these are Dragoons. Okay. But very similar. I think the Dragoons for the uh, for the Russians are just about as heavy as the Karasias for some other uh, some other nations. Like, for instance, uh, Britain. I oh, know they're not called Karasias, but they're like the guards, for instance. I think that's the same with, like, I think the British Guard cavalry is just about lighter than any other, like, Guard cavalry. In it. But uh, look at this. Just the sheer amount of cavalry in here. Is this all, this is all Pol Polish. I mean, it's all breaking. Most of the poles are going to break. Looks like the uh, Dragoons are going to hold on. They might lose here, though, the Dragoons. A big Kauru fight's going on early, early game. I mean, Lancers aren't great in prolonged melee. They've got to get that, like, sucker punch charge straight off. And now, I mean, they're going to get routed by these uh, these Tartars here. These look like uh, their own sort of Ullans here. These Are these actually... These might be the guys that I've seen that were die dead earlier. They look awfully like poles as well. But they are not poles. Yeah, it looks like the Russians won the day there, they won the field. Oh, and interestingly, we can see that there are Russians in the forest. There are indeed Russians in the forest. They need to be careful of that. Do the Poles, they may get flanked here. But I mean, in history, Borodino was, well, they defended like loads of huge redoubts, which I think is what these support, be, like these mounds are support, supposed to be. I'm not really sure. But there was huge redoubts, and this is supposed to be the village of Borodino here. Um, yeah, you can see here, I think like these is like these... Areas here are supposed to be like the redoubts that are well defended by the Russians, which are held on forever. They held these for a long, long time. Um, and then eventually when the French did take them, they just fell back to more. And uh, the French in the end were just too tired to carry on. And we can see here like the artillery is just... Look at the lines they're preparing. Gonna have a volley? Possibly not. But it looks like the Russians are going to be taking the offensive. Um, certainly after that cavalry charge, you do imagine. But I mean, they do have plenty of more cavalry do the uh, poles, so they should be ready. And it looks like the Poles are going to be defending this uh, sort of... I think this is supposed to be Gorky. This is the village of Gorky, which is near Borodino. And it looks like they've got plenty of Lion Infantry ready for them. They've got some Tartar Cav just there out in the distance. But no real push yet. I mean, it looks like the Russians have been routed on this side with their cavalry. Again, I think this might have been French cavalry doing its bit. Yeah, it looks like the French cavalry here. And maybe the artillery. Looks like artillery might have had it. Saying it as well. I mean, they've also got some cavalry over here. Yeah, this is definitely artillery taking this out. You can see men just flying. I mean, artillery does a lot of damage to morale. So they need to be careful. They probably want to move this. This is just... Seems like a bit stupid to keep it here. But uh, who knows? I mean, maybe they will eventually uh, move on. Maybe they won't. But, I mean, you can see over there the French lines. Still moving up. They're still moving up. So it looks like the French on this side are taking a bit more of an aggressive stance on the left. Looks like they're going to be the on the defensive. And what happens there? Whoa, that is strange. If you zoom in on them, it seems like they just... Well, you can see a floating men. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Wow. Interesting. I don't know if it's the map or whether uh, those units are a bit buggy. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, they're getting shot here though. Whatever happens, the French are getting shot. D invisible or not, they're still getting hit by Russian artillery. But we've got loads of different units here. We've got um, all sorts of... like I mean, this is DeVoe's actual like core that he had. Core that he had at the time. But I mean, yeah, these are awesome. Henry Jean... Uh, well, John Baptiste... Uh, or Jean, isn't it? Jean, which is just basically John. But yeah, they've got like, the Infinitables. They've got all sorts. And, oh, and the cavalry is coming out. The Schutzen's overstretched. The Schutzen has overstretched it. And the Russian cavalry is going to catch them. And yep, yeah, that's a big loss there. Rainier... Possibly stretching his lines out too far here. I mean, his stress were miles ahead of his line infantry. And he's going to lose this one, you imagine, as well. Yeah, here it comes, the cavalry. I mean, yeah, they need to respond and actually, like, kill this cavalry off. I mean, they're shooting their own troops here. Rainier's got some uh, of his own, well, lances by the looks of it. And they're going to try and counter. But they're getting shot on the back, and that does a lot of damage to friendly fire in this game. If friendly fire happens, the units are being shot. They don't like that, so you need to tell these men to hold fire. Or just... Tell them to give them another order so they can't shoot at you. But yeah, I don't know what the Austrians are doing. They're really... They're shifting all their forces, it seems to like, here. In reserve. I don't know what is going on. Maybe because they realize they've been outmaneuvered by the Russians? I don't know. But, I mean, you can barely see the Russians. So I shouldn't really be expecting to be outmaneuvered. But the French and the Russians are setting up here, it looks like, for a line battle. It looks like it's going to be Devore and it's going to be... Uh, well, I presume this is Baggregation stuff. They all just say Patriotic. Um, war, so I don't know exactly who's who's uh, 
army this is exactly, but I'm presuming this is aggregation on the far left. Or the far left in the case of the Russians, it's the far right in the case of the French. Depends who you're rooting for. Let me know in the comments who you're rooting for. I'd be, I don't know who I'd root for. I do love the French uniforms, but I do also love like the Russian just mentality of just like, it's all or nothing. It's very uh, communist Russia still. So I mean, it's just Russia, just generally. Communist, imperialist, uh, well, czarist, I guess you call them. They just do the same thing. I mean, they've lost more troops here. Being knocked over by artillery, they're falling back. They've got a huge artillery piece here. Jeez. This is a six gun uh, artillery piece, and it's, uh, they look huge, those guns. And uh, these are 12 pounders? Jeez. I mean, they're apparently getting hit. I mean, that man got knocked over by the sheer force of, I don't know, the wind. But it looks like, oh, they've got another one here, a 20 pounder. And this is a four piece. Jeez, they've got some huge artillery pieces here of the Russians. I mean, we've got Barclay to toy there. I mean, it's very vulnerable. I'd definitely be trying to shoot that, train that down with some artillery. Maybe Rainiers? I wouldn't bother shooting this infantry. But no, it looks like there's a bit of cat and mouse to start with, but it doesn't look like the French and the uh, Russians are going to engage just yet. They seem to be quite happy to carry on, well, I don't know, just dodging each other. But I mean, this is just a glorious line. Oh, as the artillery goes off and a man falls down dead from the shrapnel. Rip in peace to you, sir. Yeah, this looks glorious. But as that's going on, well, I mean, there's hardly anything going on. Oh, it looks like the well. I say that. The looks like the Polish have gone for another sort of sally. Well, not a sally, but like sort of a, I don't know, going maybe a reconnaissance, going to see what's over here. But I mean, there's some strel strelki, which I presume is like a light infantry for them, uh, for the uh, Russians, I should say, not for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, the stuff just retreating all the way back here. That's very kind of like historical, just like lone horsemen running away. Got uh, Alexander Tomasov here. Don't know that general exactly, but I uh, presume a very famous one. And then uh, we have a 15 pounder here. Getting ready. The Russians just seem to have bigger guns than everyone else. Bigger and possibly unwieldy. I don't know if they'd actually be very effective, but yeah, I mean, they're firing. Look at that. They're firing straight down that street into the poles that are in there. So that's a really good angle for them. And it looks like they're going to carry on moving forward. And the poles are giving up Gorky. The poles do not want to fight for this village. And, uh, I mean, not surprising. I mean, they're focusing down the buildings of the Russians, but they don't need to hold the village. Just hold around it. Use the buildings as cover. And it looks like the Russians are already in the back lines. I'm just seeing this. Like, these Russians have snuck around. Who is this? An artillery piece. That is huge. When did that get lost? But a general has been killed. An allied general has been killed. Oh, they got Devoe. They actually shot Devoe. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's a bit cheesy, possibly, by the Russians. But they've general sniped one of the French generals early on in this game. And uh, that's certainly going to help the, um, well, the Russian cause on this flank. Because now Devoe's army, probably the best of the four armies, is, uh, well, it's looking a bit shaky, you could say. You could say a bit shaky, but I mean, yeah, they've got all these units back here. They're just getting focused down. They don't want to blob them up. If anything, right now, I'd be taking the battle to the Russians. But, I mean, look at this defense they've got going up here. They've got to go, you've got to come up this hill. Then you're faced with guns and, uh, well, lines of infantry on left and right. And more guns here. This is a four-pounder. We've got two more four-pounders. Or another... I don't know if this is... No, this is one entire unit, I think, isn't it? Yeah, they've got some Strelke here. Jeez, this is a... I'm presuming this is like a guard one or something like that. They're like seeming nice uniforms. But yeah, the French should just come up this hill. They shouldn't just stand at the bottom of this hill waiting. I mean, it's got not bad cover, I don't think, from the artillery. Yeah, they're firing the artillery all the way back there. They need to be careful. They need to be careful. Oh, and the French are coming... The French have, like, left their... Light infantry out here again. They've made the same mistake time and time again. Or maybe they're trying to just lure in this cavalry. This isn't good cavalry, to be fair. Yeah, and now they're going to counter charge with their cavalry. Oh, it's a mess. The red is the French and the green is the Russians, if you didn't know. Oh, and they're firing into the back of them again. They need to stop this. But the French have won that. The French have won. Rainier has actually cleaned, cleaned up quite nicely here. I mean, really, they should just be more careful with their generals. Like, after seeing the first one general get sniped, they need to be, like, careful. Put them far back, possibly, just out of cannon shot. 
And we've got, I mean, yeah, it looks like the, uh, looks like the first line battle is going to be between the Poles and the Russians. I kind of suspected this because, well, the Poles have been the most aggressive, I'd say, possibly. They sent in all their cavalry early on. And this Russian army coming out of the woods is, uh, well, it's definitely the closest to the action. Look at that poor horse they just gunned down. But yeah, these, uh, these Poles are doing their best. Firing. Rapid fire. The glorious uniforms, they look awesome. And all the Poles want is freedom. And oh, look at this, they're going for the cannons. The Poles are not defending their cannons. And these uh, Dragoons are going to just mop up the cannon crew here. They're not even retreated. Don't know if the, like, the poach player wasn't paying attention or what. But uh, yep, that cannon crew is now lost, probably. Oh my gosh, what the hell has happened there? And the Poles have lost their cannon. And I think the Dragoons are falling back as well. Yeah, the Dragoons are routing. They've uh, been countercharged by some Dragoons of the Austrians. And an allied captured building has been taken. Oh, this one over here. They took a building very far out to try and take this right flank, which is not a bad idea to support that flank. Can outflank that position now, which is not too... as uh, Well, that's pretty intelligent by the French player here. He's now got a lot of his forces over here. But really, if he could keep his general alive, that would help. But he's going to get charged in the back by, it looks like it here, by uh, some cavalry here. We've got some... I don't know what this is, light cavalry, light cavalry possibly? I don't know. Oh no, these look like, uh, these look pretty decent. They look like it might be Hussars or something like that. But they're going in. They're going to take out, well, you thought they'd take out uh, Devour here. But I mean, he's already dead. There's not really a need to take out this unit. We've got Lucky taking him out. I mean, this artillery piece has been under fire constantly as well. Poor artillery piece. But I mean, I'd get rid of, the, just send that cavalry and go and deal with that like. That, like, uh, that Hussars back there. Maybe send the Austrians as well. Could go and deal with it. It's one less cavalry force you need to deal with as the Russians. Or, like, as the French. But it looks like the first uh, first bit of engagement on this side is going on. And the French are actually being engaged. They've got some really bad morale there. These Lancers just did not want to fight that. Jeez. I mean, the Russians are doing much better. But the Russians are going to win that. And they're going to rout the Lancers. It looks like just some light cavalry of some sort. Yeah, it's a really small unit. Like, Routes a unit double the size, and they've decimated them. And now they're falling back, you can see here. They've lost this left-hand side of the Russians. Uh, they've got plenty of reserves, though. They've got Strelke, they've got... Well, they've got their general, if needs be, but it looks like they're now shifting over a lot of infantry and more cavalry this way. These look like they might be uh, some sort of hussars again, but they've disappeared into the, into the woodland. And let's see how it's going on over here, then. Let's see how... I mean, looks like the Poles won that. Looks like the Poles won this engagement. Possibly. Or they've initially won. Because the Russians are falling back. Usually if anyone falls back, I just assume that they're, they're losing. Um, but maybe they're trying to lure them back into the forest. It's not a bad idea, but overstretch the Polish. But I don't think they will. I don't think the Poles would be too aggressive. Because they haven't got much artillery. They've got just this mere 12-pounder here with one gun. It's a huge and very strange shaped gun as well. It seems a bit longer than most of the other guns. And thicker. It's a chonky artillery piece. I think it's firing, trying to duke it out with, I think, the Russian guns. But surely that won't end well. They are outnumbered there on guns. But I think, yeah, the main action is really happening on this right now. It's kind of died down against the Poles. But really, I mean, come on. The French need to move off. They're just... I know they're stuck here, but I mean, and these are some elite units. They, in their dark blue, they all seem they like the imperial flag going, flying. But I mean, come on, they need to move up this hill soon. Are they waiting on their right flank to still come up? Because if they are, then they need to move it quickly. Get up this road. Yeah, here you go. The Russians are already defending this road. They have got some Strelki. They're gonna open fire. These some some skirmishes. They can't decide whether to sit down or to stand up. They're going to open fire, you imagine, soon. On to the oncoming French over there. See them in the distance. Shoot the officers! Make them leadless! Can hear all the guns going off. More Strelke firing. Actually, no, we've got line infantry now open fire. We now have a line battle that is beginning. 
And we do have, uh, I don't know what unit this is. Probably just like a, looks like a fairly standard line infantry unit. They're firing onto the French. But yeah, it looks like the main engagement's not beginning. And look at this huge force by the Austrians and the French. They're really pushing forward here, pushing the Russian center back. Which, I mean, I can't actually see where the Prussian center is. They've got some Dragoons falling back here. They've got guns here. And um, Bagregation has now moved into the center. He's not on his left anymore. Um, unless you kind of count this still as the left. I don't know. But maybe, I mean, they could really, like, swing around here. Destroy this Russian force. If the... Uh, Poles and the like the remains of the French and the Austrians over here can hold and that'll do really well But it looks like the Poles are being forced back now. It looks like the Russians have really want to take Gorky from them the village of Gorky Got some more line infantry here So we are back we did have a small crash there. I have a uh not really sure exactly why there was a crash, but we are back on this same flank with the Russians here pushing on the Poles Who are just across there. They are flanking on this side trying to take uh, well trying to take Gorky back for themselves I don't well well yeah back for the motherland I mean they never really had it at any point But I mean they had to give it up at some point, but it looks like they are gonna go into this building here It looks like they are gonna fight for this building um, sending in some, well, fairly large line infantry unit. I mean, they'll have the numbers, but whether they'll have the quality, this is a pretty... Uh, this is a grenadier unit, actually, going into fight. They're going in to fight the grenadiers here of the Poles. Um, I'm going to say the Poles will win this. Mainly because they're grenadiers, and they're firing point black range, anything that comes out of the, uh, out of the building there. You can see them firing inside there in the building. The officer... Rallying his men. No, oh, he's already been stabbed. Oh dear. Maybe they won't. He won't rally his men. You can see that actually. I don't think it has any effect in the morale. Possibly not. I don't know. Um, but certainly the morale of the uh, poles has certainly drastically gone down. Maybe that was supported with uh, more troops being sent in. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure someone mentioned to me that the banner, if the banner like the standard bearer is shot, then that does a lot of damage to morale. But it looks like the poles anyway. So, well, I don't know if that's true. Anyway, go, uh, just finishing that, wrap that up. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but it'll be interesting if it is, but surely someone else will just pick up the banner historically, so really that shouldn't make too much of effect. But it does look like the Poles are uh, setting up, they're repositioning, they're ready to push on. And their glorious uh, blue and yellow uniforms, they look excellent as always. And it looks like the uh, French and the... The French and... Well, who is running? Rainier is now running. Oh, God. Great, so it is like the Russians are going to play the general snipe play and just shoot every single general that comes into range. Uh, very dishonorable of them. But yeah, it looks like the Austrians are now have had enough. They're going to push forward. And uh, Swarz uh, I don't know how you're going to say this guy's name. Uh, Swarzenberg? I have no idea. It's probably not how you say it, but the Austrians anyway are pushing forward. And I know this, uh, this general here, the Austrian general here, does take on the French and Napoleon later in the, the latter parts of the Napoleonic Wars when the Austrians changed sides. But we've got a huge Grenzer unit here. 102, 100, 204, sorry. Maths is clearly not my strong point today. But it looks like the uh, Rainier's French here are going to try and split the uh, Russians off in this village here. They're going to try and come and take this. Some Grenadiers getting sent in. I presume to fight some more Grenadiers. Yep, some Grenadiers of Kiev. Uh, I don't know if Rainier has actually rallied. He has rallied. Good. Get him out of... Just put him... Go and put him in a wood somewhere. And hide him. They've got some Voltigeurs back there. They might... Put him with them. But yeah, here we go. So it looks like... We're going to have the first offensive really by the... German and Austrian forces. And as they go in, they're going to send in their Grenadiers. Try and take this village for themselves. How rude of them. We're going to have a big old line battle here. And I mean, it looks like these... Uh, these French forces here are getting hammered by cannon. And by the line infantry of the Russians. And yeah, these look like Saxon troops. So, I mean, yeah, they the Saxons, if you see, know what happens at Leipzig, uh, yeah, they don't do so well. And I pres who's running? Oh, it's here. They okay, the Grenadiers went in and they died instantly. Looks like they have already broken. And now I'm going to send in some uh, more line infantry. I'll just fire at them. Fire at them from outside the building. Or just not even bother. Just skip this building out. Just go on for the guns. Send this infantry up. March, flank them here, and then go for the guns. Have this cavalry support with maybe the Austrian cavalry. 
And can go for the guns and get in behind. I mean, this is a huge, huge cavalry unit. This is Karassias for definite. Yeah. Novgorod. Yeah, these are these are a scary unit here. 130 Karassias. Yeah, you want to keep this unit alive as long as possible. Big scary Karassias. They will do a lot of damage. And, uh, I mean, what are they going up against? They'll be going up against Ullans. Not really that scary an opposition for them, really. Well, maybe, I'd, I don't know. Maybe the uh, French should maybe take a leaf out of the Russian book and take out uh, Barclays of Tolly here. Seems like having a rough time. But the Russians are having a really hard time trying to take Gorky from the Poles. The Poles just do not give up. They really want Poland for their own. For themselves. God bless the Poles. And just They're just so good. I mean, they're under threat from the flank here. I mean, they're flanking... Sh now into the side of that unit. That is called Abraham Reichel. What a strange name for an infantry unit. But I mean, fair enough. But I mean, yeah, this cavalry here, these dragoons, might want to charge into this... I mean, this infantry. I mean, the poles are certainly overstretched. They don't have a great amount of cavalry left. They have some hussars. They have another unit here. But I think the Russians on this flank have more cavalry hidden uh, that they could certainly mobilize. And it looks like they're sending forward some Karassias. The French. They've got some Karassias here anyway. I know we're changing side, but yeah. The Krasis here, they're going to try and go down this line here. And they could really change the, uh, the face of this battle. I mean, look, they're going to try and charge into the side of this line for They'll probably break this. Even if they are German Karasias, they should break that. I mean, I say that. They might not. These are Russians. Yeah, they don't actually seem to be making much of a difference. And they get another line of unit here ready. Just Are they going to set up or are they going to form square? That is very smart. I don't think these other ones can form square. But I'd say they're winning in combat against all this line infantry here. Oh my gosh, what's happened here? I did not realize. The Karassias went in, and they just smashed this line, this Austrian line. And it's still in healthy numbers. And these, I mean, these Austrians are trying to fall back. I don't know if they can form square. I don't think they can. Like this Grenadier unit here, and not Grenzer unit down from 204 to 83. They have another one here, luckily. But, I mean, I mean, this is actually even Grenzer's. This is another line infantry unit. But yeah, the Austrians have just had their center flattened. And it now looks like the uh, Ullen's going to have to go in here to counter this uh, Karassia. They might route it with, like, constant charges. But what a mess. What a mess, that is. And yeah, they finally route it. But uh, to what cost? Look at the huge amount of bodies that are just on the floor here by the, that are, like, routed by the Austrians. I mean, that just really puts the uh, French, like, flank here in... In the uh, in disarray, and I mean, it looks like the French have lost their cavalry here, so their idea of pushing forward has been uh, scuppered. They've lost a lot of infantry in this uh, push forward here the, against the Russians, but so have the Russians. They're barely holding on. The Russians are making a full-on assault on the Poles, desperately trying to push them back. The Poles are almost fighting on their own. They have some uh, French and Austrian allies here, but which might need to go forward to support. Like this French force here, especially, might need to either go that way to go and support their own French forces or go and help the uh, Poles. But I mean, it looks like, wow, it looks like the Russians are having a really hard time against Devor as well. Devor is really pushing them back hard here. The gun emplacement here has been taken. The guns are lost for the Russians. And they have uh, some Austrians here that can support. I mean, I'd definitely be pushing hard here. This looks like the area to go. I mean, the French are actually in behind here. So, uh, I mean, they need to actually do something about that, really, desperately. That is a, a very, very evenly matched battle right now. But we are back. I do apologize. I had to uh, basically go and have some food. I found out that my food was, like, my tea was ready. This is how late I'm having to do this. And, uh, yes, so I was indisposed. But hopefully now, re-energized and refed, I will be able to uh, perform just as well as these Russians are on the battlefield. I mean, they're doing an excellent job there. Certainly slowing down this French advance. I mean, they seem to be doing a lot of damage to uh, quite a lot of these uh, elite units. This is, isn't this the Im this is the invisible? This is literally called is that called the invisible unit? It is. Well, I mean, actually, I say the Russians are performing well. They look like they're routing here. This uh, look at that Krasir unit. That is down from 130 down to a mere seven. Not that it really matters because they've got another Krasir unit here. Not as large, but certainly is imposing. They're falling back though. Of the cavalry. I mean. Looks like they're going to take this village here, are the French, but at what cost? They lost, like, their entire Austrian army. Like, the Austrians are basically, well, finished. Um, the, like, Davos troops are coming over to support on this flank here. 
I mean, Devoy is also forcing back effectively Bagregation's, Bagregation's army here. I actually, I think he's in he's in combat, isn't he? Yeah, no, Carl Bagavo is in combat, a different one. Well, they could possibly kill him off. Get some really good kills here, but yeah, the French are doing a really good job. What is this? The sappers here. Got a sapper unit. That's uh, they're awesome. They're doing their bit. Look at the officer unit. That is very very nice. But yeah, I mean these are. I mean they need to be careful with that sapper unit. I mean they're just like shooting shot in the back by their own troops. Might want to move the lineup. And look at that. The Russian flank is basically gone. We've got like one unit here of Smolensk line infantry. We've got a uh, another like sort of couple of units hidden off here in the in the woods but once they masses they've got some artillery here that's just appearing out of the woods and uh, I mean this is under threat they might be able to catch this with the French um, I definitely would be saying that's uh, a huge prize we're taking but I would certainly be sending this uh, French reserves here these like Rainier's troops here send them over to come and help over here the Austrians are doing just that they're sending some dragoons over here they've got units forming square of the Russians and they are facing off against these Austrians right now I mean this I mean, the Poles are doing their best. They are holding, like, Gorky to the last man. Definitely leave a like for these Poles. They've fought hard here. I mean, these line infantry are just doing... Holding the line. Definitely a good target to shoot now. Is this unit in square? Always a good idea. Form square... Like, force unit to form square. Then shoot it with artillery or other line infantry. And you can do some really, really good damage. I and mean, we've got some uh, troops fall, uh, retreating. Oh, there's some uh, Ullans here. I mean, they, they're they retreating. They're broke. Also, the uh, I presume they're like the Tartars to like a Cossack unit, I presume. But yeah, they broke them as well. What we've got here, we've got uh, just a line infantry unit. They're going to open fire onto the French. Maybe force them to break permanently. I don't know. But I mean, yeah, they need to be careful. need to be careful. We've got, uh, we've got an artillery piece all the way back here. Jeez, this is a long way back. Surely this isn't can't be firing at stuff. It is. I would want to say it's a twelve pounder. Twelve pounder. I I think I've just been like I've just been calling like twelve other twelve pounders, uh, like twenty pounders or something like that. But I, would, I certainly thought there was a twenty pounder somewhere. But I mean, yeah, you can see here. This is now the new Aust uh, the new Russian left. You could say there's a few uh, scattered units over there. But this is kind of the solid unit here. Looks like we've got some twelve pounders here. Trying to retreat. We're gonna have a cavalry charge. By the Krasiers, they're going to try and rout the rest of the Austrians. And they may do just that. They're forming square, or they're going to try... I don't know what actually that is. Oh, but I mean, it's done an okay job. It's stopped them. These uh, Krasiers are being stopped in their tracks, and they're going to be shot at as they retreat. And this, yeah, that's a good volley there by the line infantry. Shoot them as they run. I would have just carried on the charge of the Krasiers. It looks like these Austrians can't really form square. These Grenz or this uh, line infantry unit here can, but not all of them. What have we got here? Some Hussars, again, charge these Hussars, and if they're not breaking, char keep charging them in. We've got the French coming up here. Yeah, they're just moving along this long row, but they need to be careful. There are some line infantry units that they need to possibly, um, well, deal with. But because they, they might come back to bite them in the uh, in the rear later on. But, I mean, they got they might be retreating back to this uh, village here, and that won't be a, be a bad idea. Try and hold them there, but look at this. The Russians are just breaking. Constant volleys of the uh, uh, the Austrians, just forcing them back, and it looks like it's gonna be a general retreat again. And I mean, the French are just running riot, and uh, I want to say it's coming nearer to the end of the. We're coming to the last stage of the battle. It looks like the Russians are also retreating here. The Poles have hold, held them back. They're retreating back to the lines of the forest that they appeared from over there, and they. I mean, I imagine they're falling back to this village over here. But I actually don't know how much the Russians got left. They they do have like. They keep appearing and disappearing to their units, so they may have still a sizable force somewhere, but they're just shi like shifting it or trying to combine all these units that are breaking. But this is a lot of Russians breaking now. This is an insane amount. And, uh, well, it looks like Swords and Boats can fall forward. You need to be careful with him, though. His unit was quite large at one point. Oh, this is the Hussars, I think. This is not the, That's not the uh, general unit. At least I don't think it is. Oh, it might be, actually. Uh, yeah, he is actually up here. He's the general. I think he's, uh, well, trying to run down these guys. And that's not a bad idea, but you don't want him being shot by friendly fire. Or running into Austri uh, Russian units like this. Uh, just rallying, and then they're turning about. Well, they need to turn about. You're looking the wrong way. There's no uh, French over there. They're all behind you. Right here. Turn around, brave Russians. You've done a good job. Now 
finishing it. I mean, well, they've done an okay job. I wouldn't say this is a great job. I don't know what they've really done wrong. Oh, they are actually fighting for this village again. And we've got a Russian cavalry unit. I want to say, oh, it's those Tartars. They're back. They're going for Rainier. Rainier is still alive. Just remember, he got routed, but he did not die. And uh, that is risky. But morale-wise, it looks like the uh, Tartars might break first. These, uh, well, they're like Ullans. I want to say they're Ullans, but they are basically, they look like they're Tartars. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they're called. But they broke. They broke before uh, Rainier could get killed. And some line infantry got sent in as well. And some hussars are going to get sent over just to make sure that they break properly. So excellent there. And uh, well, the French took this village. Um, some grenadiers on the second time of asking did in fact take this. They sent in some Sa uh, grenadiers Spiegel and Saxe Coburg uh, grenadiers. And they routed the grenadiers of Kiev in there. So I mean, that's probably one of their most elite units. But I mean, yeah, it looks like general treat. They're trying to fall back to where the, like all the main guns are. Maybe just make a final stand there. I have no idea. But, I mean... Wow, this horse artillery moves quickly. Jeez. Definitely a really good unit to bring horse artillery. And we've got Sim, another line infantry unit here. of Simbursk. Whatever that is in Russia. They're falling back. Sound the drums! Sound the retreat! We will fall back to Moscow. And we'll burn everything on the way. I've been reading about the uh, Napoleon's campaigns into Russia and this battle just didn't need to happen. Uh, really, he should have stopped at Vitebiesk. I may have butchered that name. It's somewhere in Poland or Lithuania, or Poland and Lithuania. Um, and uh, it was really where he should have stopped for the winter since he wasted so much time. Er early months of uh, summer, he wasted just uh, basically partying and showing off his wealth, trying to avoid war. But uh, in the end, war did come, and uh, he had to fight. And, well, he did okay. We'll put it like that. He didn't lose any battles in his Russian campaign, but he still lost the campaign. And it looks like we've still got some more carriers. Still got some Karastias. Still able to cause some trouble. We've got some Dragoons here. They're just charging down any infantry that they can find. They're going to rout these guys. We need to be careful. Look, they're just losing cavalry for no reason doing that. They lost cavalry charging into routing troops. I've never seen that. I don't know whether that was artillery actually. Might have been firing them since they like flew in the air. Yeah, I think they're being focused down by Yeah, they're being focused down by artillery. That was what it was. It wasn't just charging routing troops. Yeah, it looks like the Russians are gonna fall back to well, this sort of line here. Um I don't want to fast forward, so I do apologize. You can always just uh skip it along yourself because the last time I fast forward too much, that's why it crashed. I've come to the conclusion. But well, you can see here, these units are uh, beaten, heads down, they're fatigued, and uh, very under strength. But yes, and then even if Napoleon hadn't stopped at Vitebiesk, he could have stopped at Smolensk and wintered there, as it looks like the Hussars are going in, and they've routed that infantry unit. That was a unit of like over 100, no, 82. And it's been routed by a tiny 12 unit of uh, Hussars. And they've killed the artillery crew here as well. They've destroyed half of the guns. Most of the crew. Look at this. Absolute carnage. Absolute carnage being caused here at Borodino today. And the Russians are still falling back. They are still falling back. I mean, it's kind of like in history. They've been forced off their, their ridges almost. And they've... Uh, Shame they can't put like the actual redoubts. And that would be really cool. And uh, and like show the bloody fight that went on over those redoubts, so you could try and try and recreate it. But um, yeah, they keep falling back, and they're going to keep falling back. And the French, I mean, the French seem to have plenty of numbers to still be able to take them on, though. It's not like in history where they haven't been grounded into the uh, well into nothing at this point. Looks like the Russians just need to do a little bit more killing, kill a few more Frenchies off, as the Austrians just stand over there. Love a volley, men. Oh, they killed a general. They have killed a general. Which one did they kill, I wonder? They, uh... I, will, I presume this is... Who is this? Bagregation finally is dead. I think he charged into this Austrian unit here and he got killed by Hussars and by uh, infantry. So that's not going to help with morale. Um, any Russian troops that were rallied here have started to retreat again. And uh, they're really, really falling back. Wow, they are deep into enemy... Well, not into enemy lines, but deep in the forest now retreating. 
Not quite sure how we're able to see these units, but we can. Over here, they're still... Well, the Poles really aren't making any sort of pursuit. They're quite happy for the Russians to fall back. They're going to wait until... Uh, well, the French and the Austrians really swing around this way and kind of just enclose them. I mean, they've got the French here. Rainier's force is still a very healthy. And he's got a small force here as well, pushing up along with the Austrians. It's weird seeing the Austrians on the same side as the French. But I kind of like it. I mean, two huge superpowers fighting against another uh, superpower. And they're trying to get rid of this gun as well. They're going to try and get this one off the battlefield. But it's uh, not going to happen, I don't think. Because we're going to have a tiny unit here of sappers that's going to hold the line. And they're going to kill just about every single one of these Austrians. I have I have belief in them. I mean, their morale will say otherwise. They're probably going to route very soon. I mean, this gun is taking its time. Move, move. This is our 12 pounder. I need to get that out of there. Oh, we just see the cannibals flying overhead. It's insane. It's just so good to watch. The fancy uniforms. Glorious. Yeah, I think it's those French artillery over there. It's all horse artillery. Just set up, finish this unit, Austria. You can kill it. Oh, God. Those Russians just got absolutely obliterated. I, mean, I don't think many of them died, but it's just the morale damage it does. They're actually falling back onto the guns. They're taking their time and getting out of here. It's probably because it's... Oh, jeez. I just saw men fly by. They, they didn't take out the gun. It was quite lucky. How did they not take out the gun? It literally went through its path. But yeah, these sappers have been obliterated and now we have uh well looks like we have some uh what is this just some cavalry just come in these are oh, these are dragoons more dragoons just appeared out of nowhere and they're going to deal with this uh artillery so that's really good there they're, they're going to route that and there you go i think that's basically most of the russian resistance here gone i think anything that's left is facing the poles oh my gosh there is actually quite a lot left Facing the poles. Yeah, they're trying to get everything back to here. It's going to try and defend around this village. By the looks of it. This will be the final stand of the Russians. Right, men. To me. To me. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're just going to... Well... They're not abandoning. They've still got Dragoons over here. They've got some stuff. They might have more. I just can't see it. But these guns are a bit vulnerable. They seem to be shifting a lot of their weight over to this side. Well, and that's fair enough because, well, the French and the Austrians are bearing down on them. The Poles seem a bit more relaxed. They seem to be quite happy just to send up, send up some uh, light infantry and then just kind of hold back with their main army. It's still defending what you'd say is Gorky. At this point. But uh, yeah, these line infantry just doing a little bit of skirmishing. They routed uh, that line infantry here by the looks of it. Just gunned them down. They're down to 24, 27 men. They're now getting forced back by artillery, I believe. So uh, they are just going to wait on their reserves. And I can hear cavalry. Oh, we have cavalry coming forward. Okay, so the Russians are sending in their dragoons. They're going to try and route this line infantry. They probably will do so very effectively, as you can see there. This line infantry has got no chance. And the Austrian line infantry can't save it. Is there any stuff anywhere near? And uh, to be honest, I think they've just gunned down probably more poles than actually gunned down any dragoons. I don't think they lost a single dragoon in that charge. Very effective charge. We need more of them Russians. More of them. Give yourself a chance. But I mean, they've still got plenty of hussars over here, the poles. They might want to start mobilizing them. Well, they're still fearing what is in the forest over here. The scary, deep, dark Russian forests. I mean, the, they keep disappearing in the line infantry here. So they could be... A fair amount of Russians left, but I don't think there are. What's this? There is some line infantry still holding over there for the uh, Russians, but it does look like seem like the main concentration is going to be over here now. The main final stand. And off they can see in the distance, a twirling of the bayonets of Rainier's forces. His Germans have done themselves proud today. They had a bit of a rough start, but they've done okay. Certainly should be more careful with their light infantry. I mean, these Russians, I mean, they've done themselves proud as well. I wouldn't say anyone's done poorly in this game. I think the only thing that was possibly poorly done by the Russians, uh, and I'll quickly go over there while they just start the line engagement, and I'm sure you're all like, Pope, go back, was here. I think this fight here, the Russians should have been a bit more aggressive. And uh, when this right flank came, they didn't really sort of counter it, put anything there. 
And they need to be more aggressive here in the centre, I think, when the Austrians just seem to route. They needed to support their cavalry charge here by the huge Karassia force to uh, just send up their infantry, either put it in melee or just to carry on, like, well, move forward almost and just take the battle to the uh, French and the Austrians. Because the Austrians were finished. I thought the Austrians were, like, they'd overcommitted. But no, it seemed that they survived. I mean, they had the support of the uh, of Rainier's troops, but Rainier had his troops all over the place. All over the place. It's line infantry here. A Prince Fre a Friedrich. A Fre a Friedrich. A Friedrich, I don't know. I'm awful at pronunciation, it would seem. And it looks like... Well, it looks like this tiny... Uh, this is the general unit again. He might go for these units, but I mean, he needs to be careful. One volley and it could end that general's life. But yeah, these Russian units just to be quite happy to just... I don't know. Yeah, look, they're trying to fire at summon. Oh, they're firing at Dragoons. Yeah, that's a bit of a more scary uh, opponent. I definitely would deal with them. But yeah, I mean, there you go. The general's coming anyway. It's a poor charge, but might be enough. The Dragoon's going to go and deal with the other one. Yeah, and they route these Russians that are left over here. And that is definitely clearing it all up. And you can see, like, the Austrians are now just using the roads very effectively. They're going to go down the roads and attack. And there's, like, a crescent formation forming with the French. So the Russians are facing walls of fire from every direction. And the Russians do have stuff in the forest. Excellent. So the Poles came forward. And they've been met with a bit of a surprise. A bit of a Russian surprise. And it, Russian surprises usually end in death for their opponents. I mean, the Poles are... Uh, well, they they fought hard. They probably fought the hardest I personally feel. But uh, and well, I think they'll they've been a match for these Russians already. So I think they will be again. And it looks like the French are retreating. They lost like, some units are uh, being forced to fall back. Maybe because of the guns. They're just so close. Might want to actually charge those guns. Are we gonna have a bayonet charge? I mean, they're getting point blank range of these infantry. Like this is insanely close. I want I want to see this gun go off. Coming with gunfire. They've lost over... Well, they've lost nearly half the crew. Need to be careful. Might lose another... What is... Is that a howitzer going off? I presume that is. I've not seen a howitzer yet on the uh, battlefield. Must be for the Russians. Yeah, this gun need, needs to go off soon rather than later because, I mean, these line infantry are getting closer and closer. Prince Anton's unit. What have we got here? Unit from Tobolt. Tobolt. Can we have a gun? Can we have a fire, please? When you're ready, and even if you're not ready, fire, because they're getting blooming close. And I don't know why the Russians would be speaking in a sort of posh English accent, but they are. Stop loading it! Or cleaning it out. And stop firing. <laughs> Come on. But yeah, I mean, while, whilst we're waiting for the guns to fire, it looks like the F Austrians are already in behind. And the French are as well. They've got some Grenadiers in there. But yeah, I mean, I wonder if they're actually, uh... Well, they've not actually lost a single crew member. Jeez, it looks glorious, though. And we lost the... They've lost another general. Uh, where is that? Over here. Okay, so, uh... Looks like some Hussars got sent up. They've gone and killed. I presume this is gonna be, like... Barkley de Tolly or something like that. I don't know. Oh, no, he's there. Who knows? It was one of the other ones. Put it like that. Tomasov, possibly? Here we go. They're training their guns. Oh, this is going to be glorious. This is going to be glorious. Took you long enough. I don't know where they're firing. That one hit. Oh my gosh. That took, uh, I saw the bodies drop there. Yeah, that unit. Look, if that other unit, if that other gun had fired and actually hit directly, then that unit would have broken there and then. They need to quickly load that up again and do more of that. These Russian light. Look at this. Look at this defense by the Russians at the final stand. It's glorious, but they're going to get absolutely gunned down. Absolutely gunned down. It's a real shame. I mean, they're actually taking the offensive over here against the Poles. They've moved out from their original starting positions. The Poles here are just outgunning the uh, Russians, so this is just pretty simple. They did get a bit of a surprise, I think, when they went into the forest, but it wasn't too much of a surprise. And the cavalry's in. These Dragoons have done so much damage. They've just like, I imagine these guys have got loads of kills. And they're going to route this entire flank, I think. I don't know. These Russians are going to stand. No, they're, they're breaking. They're going to break. Yeah. I mean, 
It, they fought hard, did the Russians. That's all I can say. I can't really say much more than that. And I think they'd made one or two mistakes, but nothing massive. It wasn't like anything out out of the ordinary. I think they just just got gunned down. And uh, Russia, like all Russia, I just don't think is a very strong way to go. But it's very good for historical battles like Borodino when you want to recreate them. And here come the infantry. Oh, come on, one more, one more volley. No, they've had to abandon it. No. Flee, flee for your lives. Yeah, there's only three crew members left. They're just getting gunned down. And yeah, in come the, uh, here we go, bayonet charge. As, as the artillery like crew tries to get through, like, excuse me, excuse me, going through. Don't mind us. And Barkley the Tolly's gonna hold here as well with his staff, with his men. Ordering his men forward. An honorable way to go. As the German troops of Rainier, well, they're having a pretty hard time. They've lost a lot of troops, actually, in this charge. You can see a lot of bodies down there. This is one of the bloodiest ways to lose, lose troops. One of the easiest ways to lose troops, I should say. Musket fire, you're not going to lose a lot, but uh, certainly bayonet charges you will. And there'll be the risk of your own men will rout. But, I mean, with the sheer amount of numbers here, they've done a good job in uh, just routing everything. I mean, they're forming square. I think they scared off those goons. Uh, there are more back here. I think the same unit. But yeah, there you go. Barkley de Tolly is dead. Over here. He's finally fallen. Look at that. The smoke going off. And the uh, French advance. As in, nothing had happened. And that will probably be the end of the battle, I think, there. As the Russians get routed by the Austrian Cav. It's just these two here, I think, that haven't routed. How they haven't. They're literally surrounded. They're not even facing the right way. This one is being shot in the rear. What would you tell your men if you were an officer at this point? You'd be like, well, men, we've been in stickier positions than this. And you're like, no, we haven't. Oh, my gosh, that was a shot and a half. And that's right, that unit artillery, like, just ripped through that. Uh, it was a f I mean, they're all going to, most of them going to get up by the looks of it. But still, it's just a fear factor. And there's another unit breaking. And uh, I can't actually see what's left. But that is probably going to be the end of the battle. There is probably something left. Um, yep, yeah, there we go. I was about to say I'll fast forward to the end, but that is it. Um, so, well done to, well, all the players. Uh, this was sent in by uh, Marischal Null, who was playing as the German forces, like uh, Rainier's forces. Um, but yeah, well done to them all. Uh, I mean, who got the most kills? For the French. I mean, it's actually the Austrians. That was kind of surprising. I mean, they lost a lot of their line infantry, I thought, in that one huge charge by the Carassias. But, I mean, they did then do a lot of damage with their own Dragoons and stuff. Who's the best Russian player? It was this Master here? I'm not actually sure where he was playing, but uh, since they were all the same, like, Russian uh, faction. But I presume uh, he's probably in the thickest of the fight. Maybe against, um, I don't know, maybe against Rainier? Maybe again on the far left? I'm not sure. They seem to be quite successful a bit on that side. We'll have a look at some of the statistics. So one of the units got the most kills was the Grenadier unit here. Uh, oh no, Lion Infantry, uh, 114. But yeah, the Grenadiers got 102, so they did well. Um, his Ullens getting uh, 93 kills. That's pretty good for the Ullens. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, you've got some Polish uh, Krasias here. I didn't actually realize that they were Polish Krasias. Um They got 41 kills. So that's not bad, but I mean... You've seen Karasis do it, like, insanely well. And then, I mean, the only things that he didn't use well, I think, was the Schutzen. You can't just let them become, like, a unit that just lured in the cavalry, which is a decent tactic if that was what he was trying to do. But if it wasn't, then it was just, well, suicidal for the poor Schutzen. But if you guys have enjoyed and you'd like to see more than Napoleon Total War 3 action, then please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and new to the channel, and uh, leave a comment as well to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires, 